All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from also joined from San Diego by Kiefer Hazaz. How are you doing, Kiefer? Good. How are you, John? How are you? Good, good, good. And Kiefer is uh, from Fruition RevOps. He's 15 plus years in sales, marketing, and customers fuel their unique approach, blending processes, platforms, people, and insights for peak revenue growth. And you oversee client and company projects, ensuring strategies are innovative, practical, and effective. And we're going to talk about RevOps today. But first of all, Kiefer, you know, I'd like you to kind of Define RevOps for people who maybe think they know what it is, but maybe they aren't 100% on what it actually is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough question. I think that there is some, I don't know if it's a misleading, but there is some misinformation about RevOps in general. Some people think that this is the next sales 2.0, which is not even close to that. And we can talk about that a little bit in this podcast, which is, thank you for inviting us, by the way, and thank you for having that, for having me. It's a great to join you. Um, but when we talk about RevOps, we are basically talking about a strategic approach, approach to align sales, marketing, and customer service. That's basically what drive growth to a unified process, uh, mm -hmm. tools and data. And whatever happens, if you don't use that most of the time, you will, be, you will operate in a silos, the fragmented the workflow, problem with data between department and not all the rev ops or revenue that contribute to the revenue connect into one specific goal or one common goals mm -hmm. and that's mainly thing now when we take the rev ops as a group and tell okay everyone is aligned to the same thing then you change basically how the the market how the company works toward the same goals from the sales marketing and of course the customer service and that's how you basically build the rev of itself yeah and and uh, i mean once upon a time there used to be that uh, people used to love lines of demarcation right and that whole idea of good what's it good fences make good neighbors and all that <laughs> however in the way that people purchase today and with digital transformation etc i mean those are no those are no longer applicable so what you're talking about here is a is a critical role in bringing all the different touch points to to the buyer's journey together yes don't 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 be mistaken we are not replacing the the, yeah. the cmo or mm -hmm. With the RevOps, you don't, you don't replace the CMO. You are not replacing the, the next sales, uh, sales director or the, the head of all the sales or the customer, customer service. You are basically bring something or someone or a team or a listic that connect the dots. Mm -hmm. That's what is a RevOps. Now, let's look back a little bit of the history of business operation. 10, 15, even 20 years ago, the technology landscape was vastly different. Advanced tool automatic automation automation went on were only basically to only expensive, very expensive. And sometimes even most of the client, most of the customers and most of the business couldn't mid-size and even large business couldn't even afford it themselves. Mm -hmm. The limitation basically for the department to walk silos. Each one of them works alone. Now you're talking about the fence. Yes, there was a big fence between marketing and sales, marketing doing A and sales doing B. But what happens is that the data is not flow between them. There is yeah. no relationship. So if one knows A, the other one doesn't know the, the, this, this at all. It, can, it cannot leverage that. So what happened is that integration system was a significant challenge. And that's what brought basically the RevOps. That's how the RevOps grow up to become what they become. And that's why everyone talk about RevOps. Because when you want to move that, you want to automate that, you have something that connects the, the glue that connects between all of them. And again, it's not replace the, the chief of sales, which need mm -hmm. to push all the sales and close deals. It's not replace the, 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 the guy that basically doing all the marketing and responsible to that and the customer success, but it connects the dots. It's basically bringing this automation in live. The automation, the mm -hmm. campaign, the automation campaign is basically the idea of the technology behind the rev to make it to make it happen. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you will not be able to connect. And in this market today, which you have to use multi-channel, yeah. multi-attribution, there is no other way. 
So what 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 is the profile of of an ideal person for working in RevOps? Because clearly you have to have a process mindset. You need to be able to see all of these, or you know all the all the dots that need joining. And then obviously you need to be able to work with the different groups to get it all smoothly working in a in an aligned process. So yeah, I agree with you, and and I think that the the that we call it ICP, but the person basically is the is the person that has an experience in marketing did a lot in marketing familiar how to approach how to build the go to marketing know the difference between the plg and the abm and and any mm -hmm. type of strategy has experience with sales he has to know how sales works how to close deal from scratch from lead scrapping all the way to the closing and the most important thing sometimes even has experience with customer service Mm. Because if he doesn't know how what happened after the closing the deal and get the money and get the commission, you will not know how to build this customer journey. Mm. By the end of the day, the main responsible of the RevOps is to build an accurate customer journey from one and all the way to all the time the recruitment of the client be part of your operation and the experience of this customer journey is along all the time and all the process itself. So I think that he has to have experience in any, all of those verticals, but it doesn't need to be, you know, the SDR, the exact, mm -hmm. those that know how to make all the calls or the guy that know how to make the ad itself. But it's more someone that has an experience in team management from each one of those departments in each one of those verticals and the ability to see all the, the, all the, all the process from bringing the client or bringing the brand all the way to how to manage and make upsells in the long run because mm -hmm. upsell and uh, upgrades and how to increase the value of the client it's part of the rev ops it's mm -hmm. not another department it's part of the customer journey and that's one of the things that you know when you're doing a rev up you have to work with that yeah and, and it's uh, it's very interesting isn't it because uh the way things work today is this whole idea of the customer journey and the customer experience. And the way we are hardwired as humans means that if we have a different, maybe a less optimal experience at one part of the journey, that's the one we focus in on, right? We go, oh, it was a terrible, terrible experience. Even though 90% all the other steps were perfect, we just default to the... So it's really critical for RevOps to find where... Because the, remember, it chains only as strong as its weakest link, isn't it? So finding where those gaps may be an optimal customer experience are. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and I think that in, in, in that aspect, to find the place of data silo, it's one of the major things to do. Mm -hmm. Think about it that today, until you know, RevOps become a RevOps, Customer service work by their own. They can work with the client. There was some issue over there. There was some challenge over there. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometime the client asked something and without even knowing, the customer service just replied back, we don't have it, thank you, good luck. Yeah, but yeah. this could be the next big deal, or the next big a project for the company. That's where the data silo coming in. Now, if you take a look on the service side, if one service, if the head of the service in this company is taking the data by himself and doesn't look how all the process work or there is no someone that see all the operation around that like the rev up he will keep it in, in his mind he will work with his team to improve it yes but by the end of the day the other will not know that and will not know how to leverage that marketing need to know where they are lacking of where they can take that and improve that or maybe run a campaign around you know go to a uh, G2 or any other review t system in order to increase that because if they don't know they don't know mm -hmm. yeah and it's a and, and and another part of it too is especially the way you know business is, is evolving uh, today and that is you know the systems need to speak to each other the systems need to you know transport the data for you know, to, to the relevant uh, parties and the relevant system. So again, uh, obviously a, a big part of RevOps is that whole integration piece, right? Yes, I, I think that there is a interesting uh, study by Forster that said that companies with aligned sales and marketing and customer service operation achieve 27% faster three-year profit growth mm -hmm. and 36 
percent higher customer retention rate. However, they will not be able to do that if the system are not aligned. Yeah. And in order to have RevOps, you have to have in place a good system, a good CRM, like what provides Pipeliner, how you would know how to integrate with any other system in the market. And that's the backbone of RevOps. RevOps is not just to talk with your team and see how they align with each other. It's more about how to integrate in efficient way, in a good way, in the good native integration between system so that data will fly between each one of the department and that will prevent all the data silo and that increased revenue because when you know where is the leakage in the revenue leakage you know how to solve it and teams know how to solve it the people know how to solve it but you need to show them and that's the mm -hmm. insight and i guess the other part too is that it becomes uh as different departments uh, and functions look at their tech stack they no longer again can look at it in isolation going oh this is fantastic this works for us but if it doesn't integrate easily or it's not able to supply the information that other people need you know then it's not the right system so again i think it is is taking those making those departmental decisions you have to look at them from a holistic point of view now as opposed to this is just going to work for us correct yes more than that it's not just how it works for us is how it contributes to the overall. Mm -hmm. and, and when I implement now a CRM, it's not just a CRM, it's how it affects the ads and how it affects the multi chat the touch point. And mm -hmm. each one of these touch points is essential to the overall. You know, there are a lot of clients that think that if they, are, they will try to do an outbound, you know, cadence emails or, or, or just a approach over cold or, or text, mm -hmm. and it works great, not, nothing happened. It's never end with one. It have to be a lot of multi touch point along the way. Yeah. Now to manage multi touch point, you need a system to be able to do that. And that's where coming all of those systems today, the automation system, the campaign, the automation campaign that contribute mm -hmm. to that. Campaign, you know, I think that there is another revolution that coming in to place today is that people you know people think that when you talk about campaign you're talking about an email email campaign yeah. yeah i will send a sequence of 10 emails and hope for the good when we're talking about campaign today we are not talking about just an email we are talking about how we add it into the audience how we generate that and remarketing how we're doing it as in the social media getting a text and everything need to be aligned and everything need to be on the same spot and has to be centralized in one system otherwise mm -hmm you will be a spammer and you don't want to come into this place. So that's one of the things how RevOps, when you have a holistic approach and you know to manage and monitor all the stuff, make, make, make it much more easier. Yeah. And, and you mentioned on automation there, obviously automation is a, is a critical piece because at the end of the day, you know, you want the technology to do what the technology is good at. You want it to take away the, the routine, the road, the repetitive tasks, the low value things so that, uh, you know, everybody can focus on higher value activities and relationships. So, um, how critical is, is, is automation? And if people haven't started to automate yet, where should they be looking? Today, the technology, every company can have it. Okay. It's not something like we had, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago that it was very expensive and only yeah. a very high end Fortune 500 could afford himself. You can have a good technology and a good centralization system today and start with something very easy and very fast. Most of the system have today a, a native integration with other platforms. So it's make it even easier. But when you start, to build your tech stack and how you want to do that it's not just one system you have to understand what are the goals that you want to accomplish you need to build the exact steps that you want to achieve what are the objectives and based on that you choose the right technology the technology will serve you if you build that correctly mm. which means that if i'm building an automate, uh, automation campaign now there are a lot of elements over there that some system can help you with that. And there are a lot of elements that other systems can help me with that. Now, if I know how to build that correctly, it will serve, it will be efficient and can save a lot of money in the long run and can generate a lot of money because all of those revenue linkage, data mm -hmm. silo will be prevented. 
And that's yeah. what basically bring growth. And that's how you grow. Yeah. And then obviously now we have the added uh, element now of AI coming into the mix. So um, why, where do you see AI impacting RevOps? There are two elements over here. I think that uh, one thing of, of for sure, AI, everyone wants to be part of that. No one knows how to start with that, mm -hmm. which is a very interesting you know, position from technology standpoint. And I think that AI is going to, you know, crucial and, and it has to be in any one of the company. And mm -hmm. especially in the RevOps, you can expedite your outcome. You can expedite your performance in a very large scale with AI. There are today a lot of technology and a lot of system that you can integrate with any one of the existing system today. Mm -hmm. And that's basically bring the knowledge that you have into place. Yeah. So think about that, that the AI can become your next 10 agent. And again, to implement this type, it's very, very simple. It, you don't need, you know, 10 engineers now in order to develop that. It's a very literally drag and drop and, and you have it. But again, when you're doing that, it has to be part of the overall goal. It has to be part of the overall objective of the company itself. The mm -hmm. AI can be part of every one of the RevOps. And of course, most important thing, as part of the insight. Yeah. The yeah. insights that you got from every one of those systems, and that's how you define, and that's how you take the next decisions, it's crucial to any part and any type of growth. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you know how to implement the AI, that's make a huge difference. Yeah. One last thing about that, AI can learn dramatically in every type of companies. So if you getting the right AI into your business and you know how to teach it, basically it's become him or she much faster than just another it, because then it will help you to escalate, escalate very, very fast to any type of, you know, engagement industry that you want to. Mm -hmm. Again, it's integration correctly, the right goals and the right objective, and where to put it in any one of your aspects of the business. Yeah. And the last part, I mean, and this is relevant to AI as well, particularly if you're going to use AI with your own like private data sets internally, is the is that your data has to be clean, right? I mean, that's going to be one oh. of the biggest issues that's going to face organized. I mean, it already does. I mean, most we released with our um, with Pipeliner, we released a duplicate checker a few weeks ago, right? So that help people uh, keep their data within Pipeliner clean. But I think that's going to be the biggest challenge for people is data accuracy, because let's face it, if your data is all over the place, you can use these AI tools, but they're going to be operating off garbage data. Yes, this is the data cleaner is one of the main thing in any, any integration. I think that Whenever we integrate a new system and especially in the RevOps and when we put, you know, the, all the campaign and all the automation behind that in order to build this RevOps inside the companies, that's one of the first thing that we are doing. We're taking all the contacts and we start to basically review that. We had a big project of hundreds of thousands of contacts. Some of that you still need to do by hand, one by one with a team and doing that. There is no other way. But once you're doing that and that's, the, the, the nice thing. Once you're doing that, to move forward, you are able now to manage that much more accuracy than you can do that 10 years ago. Yeah, Those yeah. bad data that happened to all of almost, I think every one of us become because there wasn't alignment. Yep. And then yep. the marketing put something and the sell put something and the customer service put something and everyone choose whatever they want. Mm -hmm. However, if you align everything, and there is no difference. There is different. There is no difference between each department. And there is one data field, and not ten data fields. Is what is this, what is the name of the client? Then this will not happen again in the future. Oh, sorry, it will happen in a very low rank, you know, few percent only, and then you can fix it. And that, by the way, where some of the AI tools that you have today in the market can start to run on your system, like what Pipeline do today. Mm -hmm. run on your system and check everything in real time and if there is a problem it fixes it automatically but mm -hmm. i think that all the companies will need to go through this process in some point in their life to clean 
the last 15 years yeah. that we weren't accurate. And from now on, start to be more accurate. And especially if you're doing that correctly with the RevOps and alignment, it will very, yeah. barely will happen if at all. Yeah, well, you know, we're cleaning data. I mean, you know, if you, uh, there's no better time than to start now because if you start next year, that's 16 years of data, or the year after, that's 17 exactly. years of data. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so it's a mix. It's replicate itself. Exactly. Listen, Kiefer, this has been fantastic. All of Kiefer's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Fruition RevOps. So I'm in the business about more than 15 years in revenue, in sales, marketing, customer service. I ran, the, I work with a lot of startup companies, technology companies, and in variety of side of businesses. Um, and in the last seven, eight years, we start to evaluate all the operation of RevOps and move from just a business and operation in business, but into the RevOps itself. Today, what Fusion is basically, we are a system, RevOps system integrator. We're building all the system integrator into the company itself. We analyze doing the audit for the company, how they're dealing with all of those departments and discipline. And by that, basically, we're building what we integrate other system or improving other system. Now, you know, there are a lot of system integrators outside, plenty of them. Everyone mm -hmm. is system integrator, very simple. Take two developer with a laptop, you become a system integrator. But when you putting inside the idea of RevOps or you putting inside the outcome of the system integrator and not just to integrate another system, but what is the, what it will happen after you integrate the system? how this going to leverage or in having more mqls in the upcoming month or the upcoming quarter how many deals you will be closed because of this fly of data between the department that's what we are dealing with today we are building we, in, we integrate and implement system that basically can help clients to generate more revenue generate new leads building more automation campaign and of course closing more deals or most of, one of the most important thing is increasing value level client, which is, uh, you know, most of the clients didn't even think about it. And yes, this is very important as well. Yeah, perfect. Well, listen, thanks again, Kiefer. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.